All right, we're about to go real world here. In this situation, we have to reshape some data and blend two separate data sets. Now, let's slow down and think about this. When do we have to take two data sets and put them together? Say you have stores and store IDs, but then there's another report that would provide for you the manager of the store and the city it's in. So we're going to be looking at that kind of thing in this example. But first, we've got some problems with the source data. Here is a situation where we may have pasted some data from a web page and it goes straight into Excel like this. In these seven rows, we see the city is Amrose. We see that the venue is the Amrose Historical Museum Atrium. The contact is Amy. The square footage is 4,800 feet. And the rating is five star. Let's scroll down. Here are our five stars. Here are our four stars, three stars, two and one star. So that's how this list is stacked up by the rating. We need clean columns and rows, but over here we have data about whether the venue has Wi-Fi or not and how far it is from our office. So now you see it's not good enough to have this data. We also want to have the Wi-Fi and the distance. So let's start to clean this up and merge the two reports. This is something we're going to do in Git and Transform, also called Power Query. And it's going to be so easy. Data's in a table. Data. We're going to do a query from table. Here is our data and notice these E's. That's really what that star is. It's just that the font is Wingdings 2. How are we going to unstack this? First, let's call this query something meaningful. Let's call it detail. I don't need this column. I'm going to remove this column. The trick of unstacking this is going to be in adding a column, adding an index column, starting from zero. And I'm going to go to standard and modulo. I'm going to add a modulo column. I'm going to input seven here because that's how many rows each venue has. And you can see Amrose starts at the top here at row one, goes down to seven, and then the next entry starts at row eight. So I'm gonna put a seven here. Okay. Now here's what we wanted. We want this first row of each record to have a zero. And notice Mattery, zero. The square footage, six. Mattery, zero. What does Modulo do? Let's go down to rows 15 and 16 and look at the index number 14. We are taking 14 divided by that seven, and there's nothing left over because. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And there's no remainder. But when you go to 15, you get 2 with 1 left over. And there's our 1. If you divide 17 by 7, you get 2 and 3 remaining. Now all of our data goes 0 through 6. 0 through 6. Now, here is something really exciting. 
Next, we need to take these ratings and fill them down so that the whole column is full. Highlight the column, right click, fill, down. Now we're going to take advantage of this modulo. We want the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going across the top so that we can dig out the detailed data and get it unstacked. So highlight the modulo column, pivot columns. We want the values in the detail because that's the data that we're trying to unstack. And here is the key going into the advanced options. Don't aggregate. We don't want the pivot table to start counting our data. We don't want to know that, say, we've got eight venues that have a kitchen. No, we want to have all eight Y's and then the remaining ends for no. We want the data not aggregated. Select that. Don't aggregate. OK. Now we can see. The city of Glassine, the stake place, street parking. Yes, the contact is Jen. No, the square footage is 4,200. And then we start here with the city. Now look at that. Yeah, we're getting the data to start looking like what we need. So we can name this city. Square feet. And let's turn square feet into a number. And we want it as a whole number. Okay, everything else is text. And we don't need this index column anymore. Right click, remove. Now what's next? Now we're gonna fill up because we wanna have the stake place come up here to where Glassine is. We want Irina to come up to this row where Fisher Cove is. Right. Give me some room here. Highlight venue. Hold down the shift key. Go all the way to square feet. Right click. Fill up. Now, you probably know what we're going to do next. Go to city and filter out null. Yeah, that's it. That's what we want. Now we can close and load it to the workbook. Home, close and load. And I like this column and turn this into wing dings too. Now we have all of our data, but we still have the Wi Fi and the distance to add in. Wi Fi. Let's format this as a table. And let's make it this color. Table does have headers. OK, so here are all of the locations, city, Wi-Fi distance. Let's start a query. Data from table. Right. Let's call this our Wi-Fi query. Now we just want to close and load this and we're going to load it as a connection. There is no cleanup that has to be done here. Close and load to connection. Load. Now over here we have our two queries. The detail query and the Wi-Fi query. Now we are going to merge those queries. 
data, new query, combine queries, merge. I want to use my detail query as the data I want to pull data to. So I'm going to put detail here and Wi-Fi in the bottom. And what needs to be matched? We need to match location is called venue up here. And we're going to do a left outer join. A left outer join is similar to a VLOOKUP. And let's click OK. Now you see this query looks like our first one, the detail query. Now this new column is being added and I'm going to expand and it's going to ask me which fields do I want to bring in? I don't want to bring them all in. I already have the city. I already have the location. I want the Wi-Fi in the distance. Okay, I'm going to unselect. I want Wi-Fi distance, and I do not want to use this prefix. Okay. okay. Now we have our data. We know now that Grand Pelican is 3,940 square feet. It does have Wi-Fi and it's 2.2 miles away from us. Let's make this final list. And close and load the workbook. 31 rows of data loaded. Close this query. We'll shrink this a little bit so we can see a little better. All right, so all of our data is together and yes, got to make this wingdings too. And here is everything we want. And now we could sort all of this by distance. Data, sort, smallest to largest. Now, what if we decided that say nine miles was a cutoff where at least we want to know if something is far away, click and get our queries back. Okay. Data show queries for the final list and edit. Let's go in and add a conditional column. And let's call this column proximity. If column name, we want column called distance is greater than nine, then let's call it far. And let's add a rule, column distance less than 5.5, then close, otherwise no, okay. Let's see, 0 0.7, close, 13.3, far, and right, six should be null. So let's close and load. Now we have a nice proximity column. So if we did want to say something, so if we did want to add a slicer, insert slicer, and we wanted a situation where we wanted to slice by proximity and whether it has Wi-Fi or not. Okay. We want yes for Wi-Fi 
and we want to look at close and medium. Select close, select the multi-select, blank. Now, these are the choices we have. So there's a lot here. Definitely, there's a lot here. But this is so handy to be able to do. We copy data off of a web page and we can paste it in and we know what to do. We were able to unstack it and the keys there were modulo and pivot and don't aggregate. And then you saw how we added a conditional column and we have a nice data set here. You see, we were able to accomplish this without dragging cells around. We didn't have to manually delete anything, move anything around. If we used getting transformed to its maximum potential and didn't sacrifice any accuracy.